Okay. Uh, so today I'll be discussing few cases and the approach to certain cases. Okay. So uh, first I'll be going through the uh, recording. Madam, slideshow. Can sorry? you make uh, bigger slideshow? Ah, sorry, sorry. Slideshow. No? Yeah. So I'll be just brushing through the recording sites because uh, if you have done it hands-on, then it's not uh, difficult to tell. But if it's not done, then uh, it is difficult to remember which side to record and all. So, so this is which record? This is median motor study. I'll be first talking about motor record. So, uh, the ground, uh, the recording side, recording electrode is kept on the belly of the abductor pollicis brevis. And the uh, uh, reference electrode is about uh, three finger, uh, three centimeter away from the G1. And uh, the electrode is kept over the median nerve with the cathode black facing the black, that is the cathode facing the uh, recording side. Okay. This is the at the distal side that is at wrist. And then the proximal conduction happens at the uh, anticubital fossa. Okay, just uh, um, lateral to the uh, the tendon or biceps tendon. Okay, then uh, next recording is ulnar motor study. Okay, so ulnar the recording electrode is kept where? This ADM. is which side? ADM. G1 right. is ADM, abducted digit minimi, and uh, G2 is uh, three centimeter away from G uh, G1. So first thing is at the wrist, which is uh, on the ulnar aspect, uh, medial to the, um, this thing, uh, medial to the uh, palmaris longus tendon. And uh, over there, you can check uh, the cathode is facing again, the black that is recording electrode. Then you go proximally, that is below elbow side and then the above elbow side. What is the distance over here? How much distance should be kept over here? From the wrist to the uh, below elbow side, how much should be the distance? And from below elbow side to the above elbow side, how much is the ideal distance? Hello? Or you are just doing it randomly? Below elbow, above elbow, maybe 12 centimeter. Below, uh, I mean, from wrist to uh, below mm -hmm. elbow, you are saying? Below elbow to above elbow, that uh, ah, 90 below degree elbow position. Below elbow to above elbow, we are keeping 10 centimeters. Okay. Usually, it is kept around 10 centimeters. And what about the wrist to uh, below elbow? There is no fixed distance for that. Okay. But below elbow to above elbow is 10 centimeters. Hmm? And the proximal most stimulation happens in the axilla on the ulnar aspect. Then this is the radial motor conduction study. So where can you keep the G1? Where is it kept? Don't read what is given in uh, below. Just tell where it is kept. EIP. Yeah. So extensor indices, EIP. And... Uh, the first record is taken how how much like how much distance from the g1 this is how much distance from the g1 that is distal stimulation site is how much distance and seven it's from the lateral aspect sorry seven, seven centimeters seven, very good very good very good seven centimeters we are keeping and then uh then you have to go to the proximal side proximal side is where which is shown over here in the b okay it is in the at the level of elbow. So it is between the brachioradialis muscle and biceps tendon. Okay. And then next, next side of stimulation is at the spiral groove, which is over here, C. Okay. So this is how the radial motor conduction study is recorded. This is peroneal motor study. So where do you keep the uh, uh, recording electrodes in the peroneal motor study? Yeah tibialis anterior okay so one is kept over the bulk of the tibialis anterior over here this, this g1 and g2 is how much far away from the g1 
or you keep it randomly like that midpoint of the ankle like that or uh, there is a distance over there midpoint between two malleoli yeah midpoint between the two malleoli okay so lateral and medial malleolus ka it's a uh, like approximately distance and then midpoint of it you keep the uh, reference electrode okay and the stimulation the distal stimulation happens where fibular neck below fibular neck and the proximal stimulation happens above the fibular neck in the popliteal fossa on the lateral aspect okay most many times the study is done in the prone position so remember whenever you are recording the cmaps the ground can be like away from the uh, electrode or it can be kept over here but the ground position does not matter so much when you are recording the cmap study but the ground position matters in the snap study where should it be kept when you are recording the snap study Hmm. between recording and uh, yes yes between the recording and the reference electrode you have to keep the uh, ground in case of snaps okay hmm. uh, so this is again peroneal motor study this is, this is peroneal motor study here. okay what is this edb stimulation yeah correct so there are this is peroneal motor study which is of tibialis anterior okay this is a proximal stimulation and this is the distal most stimulation of peroneal motor so when do you do this peroneal ta is there any uh, indication or you just do it randomly if we want to see any conduction blocks between mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. many times so clinically if you see what happens is if you are suspecting suppose uh, some sort of demyelinating neuropathy okay sometimes long standing demyelinating neuropathies they will end up becoming axonal on the ncs long standing demyelinating neuropathies so the distal record all looks like uh, it has become axonal so in such cases you can record the proximal site that is peroneal ta that will give us idea whether in the semi distal muscles whether there is any demyelination happening okay so that is one of the most important uses of this proximal stimulation and of course the conduction block between the distal and the proximal site so peroneal uh, edb uh, record how how do we record where is the g1 cap that is uh, uh, recording electrode it's on the edb edb yeah on the edb and g2 is kept where fifth metatarsal ha huh? base of the fifth metatarsal base of fifth metatarsal correct and the record happens where edb yeah edb record no you don't not directly stimulating the edb na you are stimulating at the ankle only na you are stimulating at the ankle right Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So it at the ankle where? You can see the site over here where it the uh, I mean the stimulation is happening. Is there any location for know. it, or you do it randomly? Middle of the two middle. It is slightly uh, that recording midpoint. It is one to two centimeter lateral to midpoint of the land malleolus. Okay, it's not exactly at the midpoint. The okay, and then the proximal conduction happens at the below uh, at the level of fibular head. and one is above the level of fibular neck that is in the popliteal fossa then this is tibial motor study which muscle we are recording here in ta which muscle do you uh, tibial is uh, uh, tibial nerve study which muscle are we recording abductor hallucis abductor. yeah abductor hallucis so 
here the uh, g1 that is the rec recording electrode kept on the adductor hallucis muscle g2 is where base of first metatarsal hmm. base of the first metatarsal and then the recording happens just behind the uh, medial malleolus medial malleolus okay and the proximal stimulation happens at the popliteal fossa so many times what happens you record this and you get a c map of suppose 6 and here you do it comes zero what hap what is the situation what to do in this situation in popliteal fossa it would be very um, deep the tibial nerve would be deep maybe the yeah, stimulation yeah, it is deep so then what to, uh, is there a way to sort out this problem many times we uh, falsely reported as a it is falsely reported as a conduction block it's not a conduction block so can we sort out this situation and how how can we sort out this problem prone position we can blocks? do very good so one thing is at the prone position you have to do next is Anything else? You increase the duration of the current. So normally, what is the duration kept for the CMAPs? Last time we had discussed this. What is the duration normally kept for SNAPs is 100 milliseconds. For CMAPs is 200 milliseconds. 100 milliseconds. Uh, 200 millise 100 to 200 milliseconds is the normal uh, duration. To be kept but if there is this popliteal fossa problem happening repeatedly you can increase the duration to 500 okay you can increase the duration to 500 milliseconds and then record the cmap okay then so normally most of the studies we do uh, distal uh, stimulation like this are we uh, like aware how to record the axillary cmaps Can anybody tell how do you record the axillary C map? Hello. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Yeah. How do we record the axillary C map? Dr. Nilofar, uh, if you want to answer, you can unmute. Axillary nerve supplies which muscles? Deltoid and, and? Davis man. Very good. So where do you keep the recording electrode then? You, you can't test the terrace minor. So you have to use the deltoid. So you keep it on the bulk of the uh, yes. middle, middle fibers of the deltoid and And recording, uh, I mean, the reference electrode about three centimeters away from it. Okay. And where do you stimulate? Supraclavicular fossa, madam. Yeah, supraclavicular fossa. Where? Medial, lateral, or center? Lateral. lateral. No, it is like you have to stimulate near the nape of neck. Okay. Then uh, how do you record the musculocutaneous nerve? Biceps. Musculocutaneous uh, nerve supplies what? Biceps. Biceps. Brachialis. Brachialis. Biceps brachialis. And? Coracobrachialis. So you can't check brachialis, you can't check coracobrachialis. You have to check biceps only. So how do you check that? You keep it on the belly of the muscle. Mm -hmm. recording electrode should be on the belly of the muscle and the reference will be away from it. So it is near the tendon. Where is the tendon? Inserted in the anticubital fossa. Okay. And where do you stimulate? 
So supraclavicular. Again, supraclavicular fossa, but in the middle of the supraclavicular fossa. Okay. Okay. Now I'll be discussing about the sensory one minute. Sensory recordings. So in the sensory recording, this is a median uh, sensory study. Uh, stimulation site is uh, as discussed. This is the D one. How many recording sites are there for median nerve? This is D two. Sorry, this is D one. This is D two. And where is D three? Middle finger. Yeah. So D one, D two, D three. Okay. And the distances over here is ten, twelve, fourteen. Okay, from here. So ten centimeters from here, the stimulation first uh, for the D one. Twelve centimeters from here, stimulation for D two. Fourteen centimeters from here, the stimulation for the D three. Okay. And most of the time, what we do is D two. Okay, so the recording electrode is kept as G1 over here and G2 is about uh, 3 centimeters away from G2 and the recording uh, stimulator. How do you record ulnar? D5. Only one finger that is D5, G1 over here, G2 over here and uh, stimulation happening at the wrist. Okay. Then, uh, how, has anybody done dorsal ulnar cutaneous nerve study? This is duct study, the dorsal ulnar cutaneous nerve study. So, how do you record dorsal ulnar cutaneous nerve? The recording electrode is kept over the um, uh, web space between the fourth and the fifth finger. The fourth and fifth finger web space recording uh, electrode is kept and the uh, reference is uh, slightly away from the recording electrode. And the stimulation happens. This is the styloid, ulnar styloid process just slightly proximal to the ulnar styloid process, the stimulation is done. Usually the amplitude of duct is supposed to be very low, which is three to five uh, uh, amplitude should be there, microvolts, okay. This is a radial, superficial radial nerve, radial sensory study. Stimulation site is over the uh, radius. Recording electrode is placed over the... <coughs> anatomic snuff box. Yeah, anatomical snuff box. And the stimulation happens over directly over the nerve over here, okay, which is just uh, three centimeter, three fingers above the styloid process, radial styloid, okay. Then supine and sural study. So how do you record supine study? Superficial peroneal nerve. Where is the G1 and G2 kept? Just some lateral to the midpoint between yeah, so two. There is a, it is written over here. So tibialis anterior tendon is there and lateral malleolus. So midpoint of that, tibialis anterior tendon and lateral malleolus, midpoint of that is G1, G, uh, where the G1, G2 are kept. Okay. And uh, recording electrode is kept, I mean, the stimulator is kept at the lateral uh, lateral calf. How much distance? This distance should be how much? Usually 9 to 10 centimeters is the distance kept for this. Sural snap, how it is taken? Uh, recording electrodes, are, this, is, this is very easy. Uh, just posterior to the lateral malleolus, G1 and G2 are kept. Okay, but the stimulation happens where 14 centimeters from this. You have to calculate 14 centimeters and exactly at the midpoint of the calf, okay, you have to stimulate and look at the position of the ground. These are the electrodes. This is the uh, stimulation and the uh, ground is kept in between. Okay, so this is how the snaps are studied. Uh, you should also be knowing how to record the LABC, MABC and Safina snap. How do you record the Safina sensory snap? And what is the use of Safina snap? In plexopathy. Which plexopathy? Lumbar, lumbar plexopathy. Lumbosacral plexopathy. Okay. Anything else?
which nerve actually has this saphenous i mean which nerve, from which nerve it comes femoral from? no yeah so femoral neuropathy if you want to prove saphenous snap is very helpful so but how do you record the saphenous snap here again the tibialis anterior tendon between the tibialis anterior tendon and medial malleolus okay you keep it over here that is g1 g2 and the stimulation is happening at the uh, it is it is somewhere between the shin and the medial calf okay the shin bone we feel okay and the medial gastrocnemius there is a gap in between there is there, there is a like a khadda or cleft in between where you can stimulate this uh, so, saphenous sensory okay normally the amplitude should be hardly 9 to 10 uh, microvolts okay and uh, how do you record the labc and mabc can anybody tell have we done labc mabc recording any time no uh, when we uh, suspect for the uh, lower brachial flexor injury yeah so plexopathies right plexopathies whenever you are asking for plexus uh, nerve conduction study you have to uh, ask for the you have to ask for the uh, mabc and labc right mm -hmm. so how do you record the mabc mabc should be somewhere uh, medially Hmm. Yes. Ah. So, where do you stimulate it? Elbow. Abs. Al mm -hmm. Elbow. Medial arch elbow. Huh? So it should be like uh, the the entire study happens on the medial aspect of the forearm. Okay. So G one is kept where? Uh, G1 is kept about uh, 12 cm from the uh, stimulation site okay so you join a line between the ulnar wrist you can imagine on your forearm there is an ulnar wrist okay and the stimulation site is at the elbow barabar so uh, from the stimulation site 12 cm you have to keep the G1 and G2 will be 3 cm distal to it understood yes ma'am Hmm. And then the stimulation site will be between the biceps and the medial epicondyle. Understand? Mm -hmm. And what? How much should be the uh, amplitude of MABC? Normally, what should be the amplitude? More, of more, more, uh, more than or equal to five milli. Yeah, five, five microvolt. Five. Yeah, five. Okay, so this is the MABC. So you should remember that twelve centimeter distance from the uh, record, uh, stimulation site, which is between the biceps and the medial epicondyle. There is a stimulation site, and from that place, twelve centimeter you have to go, and that place will be the G one site, and three centimeter uh, proximal to that will be G two site, and then the stimulation will happen. What about LABC? Where is the G one placed? it should be on the lateral forearm right yes. mabc is on the medial forearm labc is on the lateral forearm <clears throat> so this is also 12 cm so uh, from the uh, anticubital fossa just lateral to the biceps tendon would be the uh, stimulating site okay now from here you take a 12 cm distal that becomes g1 okay and from there 3 cm uh, proximally will be g2 okay it is easy same like mabc only okay what should be the amplitude of uh, the labc more it than or equal to bigger. 15 microvolt yeah yeah it's slightly bigger than the uh, mabc okay 5 uh, 15, uh, microvolts. 15 microvolt yeah 15 microvolts is the usual amplitude okay so this is how you check the and uh, labc mabc should be known because it is very important for the brachial plexus analysis so 
okay so i will be starting with the case uh, sir i just want to change my ppt can i do that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you can okay. change Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. You okay. can start the slideshow. Mm. No, I see. Yeah, so this is the first case. Uh, you all can see properly. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so can anybody just take a like uh, can anybody just volunteer to describe yeah uh, if uh, it is not uh, visible then you can zoom on your own screen yeah just uh, start describing somebody whenever you Doctor, are kept, you are given the nerve conduction study uh, this uh, chart for the exam uh, in the exam, usually they give a chart, uh, I mean, this paper, right? Or they give it on the laptop? Yeah, paper mostly. Paper. So, whenever you see the paper, first go through the entire NCS. Okay, don't try to jump to conclusion. Go through the entire NCS. So, now, one by one, you can just keep reading and try to interpret. Yeah, Dr. Harshwardhan, you can start then one by one. Uh, Madam will ask to other people. Mm. Um, I mean, first, uh, mm. the, got out peroneal, right side. Yeah, right peroneal. This is a yeah. CMAP study, okay? Yes, ma'am. In the, the right peroneal is, is not recordable, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, right tibial, what is happening? Right tibial is uh, is not recordable in popliteal. So, yeah, but in the distal side, what is happening at the ankle? Is it completely absent or something is happening over there? Yeah, yeah, amplitude is low, ma'am. Amplitude is but low, and what is low. happening to the latency? And uh, Conduction velocity is also low. No, conduction velocity is not recorded. See, uh, you are not able to see the upward headings. Yeah? Uh, you are not able to see right. right. So this 18.2, uh, this 10.3 millisecond is a latency. 0.6 is Let an amplitude. Change. Yeah, 0.6 is an amplitude. And millimeters per second is conduction velocity. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Huh. So in, this, uh, in digital, digital latency was increased. Amplitude yeah. is decreased. Yeah. And, uh, so, Correct. But uh, what do you think? Like the amplitude is, uh, what is the normal amplitude of right TBL? I mean, uh, what is the normal amplitude of TBL? Uh, more than or equal to 4.4. Yeah, more than 4.5. Correct. And the uh, yes. latency is normally how much? Less than or 4.4 uh, or 5. Okay. Some labs have different value. I think we have around 5.5. Okay. So uh, this what is happening here is the latency prolonged is the amplitude low is this a kind is this a demyelinating pattern what is it at the right tbl ma'am demyelination uh, amplitude is not uh, so much decrease hmm. second axonal yeah so mainly it is uh, mainly it is axonal see for hmm. a 0.6 amplitude this 10.3 latency is hmm. acceptable as an axonal are you understanding? Yes, ma'am. If I would have said this was a two microvolt, two millivolt uh, amplitude, uh, this thing, uh, amplitude, and the uh, latency would have been 10.3, I would have said this is a more likely to be a demyelination. Demyelinating. Correct. So 0. Yes. 0.6 amplitude is a very low, and for that, this 10.3 is okay. Okay. But uh, what is happening at the popliteal fossa? Absolutely no record is happening. Not record. Okay. 
so i would say this this pattern is what this is more of uh, hexagonal ma'am hexagonal with some secondary demyelination pattern is seen okay what is happening at the left peroneal the peroneal also ma'am same, same. increase the latency yeah. decrease amplitude yeah no conduct okay and no recording in the in a proximal study. study okay no record happening in the proximal study what is the normal peroneal amplitude uh, more than or equal to 2 ma'am correct so here it is like 0.9 okay so for 0.9 this 18.2 is a bit more prolonged okay so i would say that this could be uh, i mean equal like demyelination plus axonal okay axonal more than demyelination but now here left tbl what is happening over here in the tbl distal latency increase uh, amplitude yeah. decrease yeah okay so and this is also like more of not axonal, yeah more of axonal plus demyelinating pattern correct yes, what yes, about right median <clears throat> right mean median also ma'am uh, latency is increased yeah and, but uh, it is too much amplitude the, yeah but two, amplitude. See, ampli 4 is the normal amplitude normal 4. Amplitude. 10, correct so for that this is 2.7 is just half of it okay but yes, the latency is extensively prolonged it is 9.7 centimeter which is supposed to be normally is latency is how much for median uh, less than 4. Point. correct less than 4.5 and if you see for a 2.7 uh, millivolt, the proximal conduction at elbow is not happening at all. So this is more looking like a demyelinating more than axonal pattern here. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Then over here, Alnar, what is happening? Alnar, this is a no normal latency. Yeah. And then normal amplitude i think no no uh, alnar uh, latency uh, say is it is prolonged no uh, prolonged. latency is prolonged sorry alnar latency is prolonged that is uh, what is the normal alnar latency c map 3.3 uh, ma'am 3.3 so hmm. this is 5.5 so the latency is prolonged hmm? and what is the normal amplitude of alnar uh, 6 ma'am Hmm? Six. Six. So this is 3.4. It is not that low. Okay. It is not that yes. low. Hmm. Now you go to the below elbow side. What do you see over here? Uh, amplitude is decreased, but yeah, amplitude is decreased. What about what about the conduction velocity at this side now? Mm, 47, ma'am. Which is Slightly low, ma'am. Normal is a 49. Slightly low. Yeah, yeah. It is slightly low. Now you go further above. That is above elbow. What above is happening elbow. over here? Amplitude is decreased, but is there a conduction block happening over there? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So there is a conduction yeah. block happening yeah. over there at the above elbow side. And if you see the conduction velocity also, it is very low. It is like 31. Okay. So yes. there is something, some demyelination happening between the below elbow to above elbow side. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then left median, what is happening? Uh, latency increase, amplitude decrease. Yeah. But if you see elbow, there is elbow no record. Is not record. It is also a conduction block. Even the conduction block is seen in the right median. See, yes, 2.7 millivolt amplitude is there, which is fair amplitude, not less than zero, uh, one. No? So, yes. but the proximal side, there is no conduction happening at all, right? Yes, so, this is a conduction block itself for the median at the non-entrapment side. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, then what happens at the uh, ulnar? You see now ulnar. Yes, left ulnar. What is happening in the left ulnar? Mild distal latency increase, amplitude normal, ma'am. Yeah, amplitude normal. And at the below elbow side, what is happening? Uh, amplitude is a decrease more than 50%. The conduction block is present. Conduction happening more. And if you go further proximally, the conduction velocity, the amplitude is there only, but conduction yes, velocity has conduction gone down velocity. to 24 meters per second. So this is also, this is more likely to be a demyelination. Understand? Yes, ma'am. This left ulnar, even the left median, right, right median, all they look like more of demyelination. 
okay and the tibial ones peroneal ones they look like mixed uh, demyelination plus exonal okay so then next is latencies of the uh, fas you can see the fas are not recordable only for the tibial median ulnar median like that yeah. okay what do you interpret from this severe exonal ma'am no 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 see uh tibial uh, both both tbls they uh, both tbls the cmaps were very low so it is possible that you may not record the f waves okay but the median ulnar and right and left median and uh, right ulnar the cmaps were okay they were more than two okay so you should be able to record the f but still the f is absent what does that mean Are you getting my point, or you want to discuss something? No, ma'am, I am not getting. Point. See, normally, if you, if the TBL C map, I mean, if you saw this conduction, the TBL C map is already less than one point four. It is, whatever, and the okay. right one also is less than one. Okay, so yes. in this study, already the M in F F study, you get a. M and you get an F study, right? So yes. the M is already low, very low. So F may not come only in this study. Oh, Understand? Yes, ma'am. Ha! Huh. But the right median, left median, and right ulnar, all of them have at least more than one milli uh, millivolt amplitude. So F should yes, be recorded in these uh, patients, ideally. Yes, ma'am. Ha! Huh? But in this, the F is not there, which means what? Proximal. Again, proximal lesion. Proximal. Yeah. Yes. So there is a proximal demyelination, whatever. Yes, proximal yes. process is there. Proximal lesion is there. Understand? F yes, wave yes. absent in a patient whose amplitude is coming on CMAP. Okay. So that yes, means yes. if we see, if we see median ulnar uh, uh, right and left median and ulnar, there was already distal demyelination happening. And then there is a proximal demyelination also happening in the form of F waves. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. What is the normal uh, left? Uh, I mean, the ulnar uh, F wave latency. Uh, less than thirty-two. Uh, so is this latency normal, or there is some problem with the latency also? Latency increase, ma'am. Yeah, latency is prolonged. So this is also look favoring more of demyelination. Yes. Demyelination. F levels. Okay, proximal levels. Yes, hmm. yes ma'am. Okay, now you go through the snaps. What is happening to the snaps? And then sural is a five microvolt amplitude. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Both right and left surals are five. Uh, yeah. Right and left. Le mm. Latency is a normal, ma'am. Yeah, latency is normal. Less than four point. And correct. amplitude is a mild decrease. Six microvolt mm. is a normal. Correct, correct. Both in superficial and sural. Normal. Correct, correct. And a conduction velocity is also normal. Yeah. And what happens to the left superficial peroneal, right median, right ulnar, left median, left ulnar? Not alnar. recorded. Yes. And what, what is recordable? Uh, radial. Correct. So what is happening over here? Sural sparing. Yeah, sural and radial sparing is radial happening. Sparing. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Sural and radial sparing is happening in this situation. So, uh, what does that indicate? And what is that ratio? Sural plus radial no, snap radial. Divide, uh, divided by ulna plus median snap more than one. No, it is like median plus ulnar snap upon sural plus radial yeah, snap. Radial. No, no, sorry. Sural plus radial upon uh, median plus ulnar snap should be more than one. That will be indicative of what? AIDP. 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 Understand? Agree or not? Yes, ma'am. So, this is nerve conduction. So, final comment would be what? And what do you think this nerve conduction study is indicative of? In the upper limb, uh, predominantly uh, demyelinating with conduction block in Correct. bilateral uh, the, uh, median and ulnar now. Correct. Uh, and uh, in the lower limb, 
tbl and uh, several proximal study is not recordable and distal study suggests you more of uh, axonal than the demyelin okay correct and uh, in the sensory study i would still say it is axonal plus demyelination it has never not become completely zero huh? yeah. it is there like 0.5 0.6 okay you have not seen yeah. the graph maybe there is temporal dispersion you don't know okay yeah. So yes. I would I would say it is prox, uh, axonal plus demyelination in the demyelin. lower limbs and uh, predominantly demyelinating, demyelinating in the upper, upper limbs and uh, sural plus radial sparing in the snaps, which is and the F waves absent and uh, also there is prolonged F wave latencies. This uh, and um, there are conduction blocks in the upper limb in the in some uh, non entrapment sites. So this is suggestive of with sural and radial sparing. This is suggestive of Thank you. Demyelinating neuropathy. Yeah, demyelinating polyradicular neuropathy. Radicular. Radicular neuro you have to use the word radicular neuropathy. Radicular neuropathy. Okay, so this is a yeah. demyelinating radicular neuropathy with sural and radial sparing does not happen in CIDP. Okay, so this uh, that also favors like the acuteness of the problem. So AIDP is a possibility. Okay. Yes. Sir. Understood. Okay, I'll just go ahead. <clears throat> H reflex is absent. Okay, so you you all know the A AIDP electrodiagnostic criteria. Hmm. So what yes, is? Yes, I mean uh, if you demyelinating uh, neuropathy, distal latency is a more more than a uh, one thirty percent of upper lobe. Okay, so tell, me, so tell me in the first week of uh, GBS, what all NCS abnormalities do you notice? Only FF prolong. Uh -huh. uh, FF abnormality. FF abnormality in the form of either absent F waves or impersistent, uh, FFs, impersistent F waves. Okay, what is impersistent F waves? It's less than 5. Uh, 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 yeah, so last time we had discussed persistence means out of 10 records, uh, 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 8 records should be record eight, eight. 80 percent should be the normal persistence. Uh, okay, so if it is less than 80 percent, then it is supposed to be impersistent. Okay, uh, so yes, impersistent F waves or absent F waves or delayed prolong, I mean, prolongation of the F wave latency is the earliest abnormality noticed on the NCS of. GBS in the first week. Okay, sometimes you yes. can uh, like in the towards the end of first week, you may see sural and radial ka, uh, sparing. Okay, and the proper yes. conduction blocks and all will start usually start happening in the towards the end of first After week, two weeks. 10 days. Yeah, 10 days later. Okay, yes. all these values you just go through like uh, less than 70% of uh, lower limit of normal, mm. uh, all these things. Okay. Uh, what happens in the Aman? Amplitude. Usually in Aman variant, what do you see? Decreased amplitudes. Yeah, most of the nerve and nerves C maps will show absent or decreased amplitude, but the latencies and conduction velocities will be preserved. Okay, and F waves will be preserved, but they can have F wave absent. Does it? Uh, I mean, do you agree with that? F wave impersistence or F wave absent in Aman? That is due to decreased CMAP. It would be like only 5% of the... But you can get only F wave absent also sometimes in Aman. Why do you think that can happen? Due to decrease C maps. No, I told you without decrease in the C maps, you can get absent F waves in some of the nerves. Because of radicular involvement in GBS. Yeah, because of the root involvement. But what is Aman actually? Nodopathy. Yeah, that is the point. Okay. So Aman is a nodopathy and it can involve the proximal uh, roots. Okay. And that is why you can have absent F waves only. Okay. And uh, AMSAN and all, I will not discuss. 
all this you want me to discuss this conduction uh, criteria for cidp and all because these things are to be you know remembered like distance latency distal latency should be more than 50 percent above upper limit of normal all these things and they don't ask you all this or do they ask you this in the exam do they ask all this like directly you tell the criteria like that usually the 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 case is given and you have to draw an interpretation hmm? okay. yeah, yeah. yeah mostly theoretically they, they will ask in theory but practically they will ask this only interpretation yeah so all these things are to be kept at the back of your mind that the distal latency prolongation should be more than 50 percent of upper limit of normal in two nerves which are away from the non-entrapment site especially at wrist and then reduction of conduction velocity more than 30 percent in two nerves prolongation of fa latency more than 20 percent all this is taken from the efns guidelines huh okay uh, mm -hmm. now i'll tell, tell another case so this is the 66 year old woman she came with the sensory ataxia yeah. first what Dr. Anusha can uh, Dr. Anusha can answer this question. Yeah. Next, next And uh, there is a 66 year old woman. She presented with imbalance while walking, and it was worsening in the dark, and it was mainly sensory ataxia. It was there for past 10 years, but now it has worsened. Okay. Joint position sense, a vibration sense were um, absent. Uh, and reflexes were also absent, but power was normal. Okay. This is a nerve conduction study. Uh, left median motor study. Hmm. Distal latency is 3.2 normal. Hmm. Amplitude is normal. Hmm. Conduction velocity is normal. Hmm. F wave is also normal. Okay. Left median sensory study, amplitude is normal, distal latency is normal. Okay. Left tibial motor study, amplitudes, conduction velocities, distal latency, and FFs are normal. Okay. Left peroneal motor study also normal. Okay. Left sural sensory study also normal. Okay. So do you think this is a normal study? Yes, ma'am. The patient has sensory attacks, yeah. So, yeah. what do you we think? Can, we can localize it to roots, ma'am. Yeah, uh, we can localize it to roots or? Proximal to uh, dorsal root ganglion. Yes, roots, dorsal root ganglion or third possibility spine. is? Spine, posterior, posterior column. column. For sensory attacks, yeah, this, if the snaps are all okay, then these three possibilities remain. Roots, um, dorsal root ganglion and posterior right. column. Okay. Yes. Yeah. This is the. Uh, this is, uh, this is done. Okay. This is the EMG. Okay. EMG is all normal. There is nothing. Uh, no denervation. Nothing seen in there. EMG also. Mm -hmm. So now. That. Hmm. So positive. Same possibility. Okay. Rats. Columns, posterior columns. Posterior column. Or why not dorsal root ganglion? Hmm. Dorsal root ganglion. Okay. But dorsal root ganglion, do you have normal snaps or uh, absent snaps? Absent snaps. Yeah. So dorsal root ganglion is out. So now the hmm. sensory attack is either posterior column or roots. Okay, mm -hmm. if it was mm -hmm. roots, then something should motor. have been in the motor, right? Motor also should be there. Mm. Only sensory roots, unlikely. Okay. So we do the SSCP. Now, what do you see? SSCP, uh, not recordable yes. from lumbar. Yeah, lumbar also and cervical also they are not they are not been able to record the SSCP. So what do you mean by that? Uh, so posterior column from the 
TBL NAR. Hmm. So poster columns are involved. So SCCP's record what? Dorsal column, sensory. And, and is it just dorsal yeah. column? Root also. Yeah, it records roots also, dorsal column also. Still, mm -hmm. the root are not completely ruled out. Okay, but EMG mm -hmm. is not showing any root involvement. Yes. So, you have narrowed out, narrowed it down to posterior column more likely than the roots. Root, yes. So, what, how will you proceed with this patient now? But in the examination, have you noticed I had written there was a reflexia? Yes. So, so, posterior columns reflexes will be normal. Yeah. So, root may be a possibility. No. Yeah. But only dorsal root without motor involvement, motor root involvement. So, what is CISP? Mm -hmm. Only sensory roots involvement, chronic immune sensory neuropathy. Polyradicular. Okay, not neuropathy. It's a polyradicular. Polyradicular so neuropathy. So, in this patient, you do what? Investigation, what, what do you do in investigation? Uh, CSF to see. Yeah. First you do MRI mm -hmm. for, of roots. Roots. Okay. So you see, you see if there is any contrast enhancement of the roots. Okay. Thickening or contrast enhancement of the roots. And uh, then you do the CSF. You may find uh, some albuminocytological dissociation. Okay. And of course, they are immune mediated. Okay, so this is the nerve conduction study seen in the CISP. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, here median somatosensory evoke potential like seems to be little uh, normal only, no, ma'am? Yeah, lumbar. Lumbar, we are talking about lumbar. Uh, so, the, so, posterior column, if enter involvement, should it be absent, ma'am? Like... A posterior column, if there is involvement, it can get delayed. Okay. Usually, if it is absent, then it is indicative of more of roots only. Okay. okay. But it is very difficult. Like there is no, there can be some arbitration in this also. But okay. uh, because they are absent, there are two localizations possible. One is this posterior column or roots. Okay. Okay. Hmm. So, you, you know about CID, CISP, no? Have you read about nodopathies? Yes, ma'am. So, this is just one case that I have discussed. We'll go to next case. Uh, this is a 64-year-old female with sensory ataxia yes. and mild distal weakness and generalized day reflexia. Okay? Next, next, who will answer the question? Dr. Nilofar is there online? Yes. Dr. Nilofar, who want to try? Dr. Vikas, who want to try? Uh, Dr. Varun, you can try. Otherwise. Okay, sir. Hmm. Yeah. So, patient is a 64-year-old female with sensory ataxia. There is mild distal weakness and there is generalized areflexia. Okay? Yes, ma'am. So, this is her nerve conduction study. Um, um, and first column is amplitude, ma'am. No, the first column, sorry, oh, is uh, first column is latency, next column is amplitude, and last column is conduction velocity. Only three things you look for the latency, amplitude. Usually, it is in that sequence only. Latency, amplitude, and conduction velocity. Uh, median latency is like normal is prolonged median latency at the level of wrist in left median. Huh. Uh, with uh, amplitude is uh, uh, also little less only. Hmm. And conduction velocity is like very less. Yeah. So. So. Maybe demyelinating picture, ma'am. Yeah, predominantly demyelination. This is like okay. 
then left ulnar is what is happening uh, left ulnar mam at the latency is prolonged amplitude is almost same like uh, no sorry sorry uh, it's 2.8 uh -huh. so it is same only mam like and it, so yeah, here also demyelinating picture yeah, predominantly demyelinating in conduction velocity also you see 22 mm -hmm. huh? it is very low mm -hmm. then then ma'am at, the uh, at the level at the common peroneal ma'am uh, amplitude is uh, is also less ma'am common peroneal mm -hmm. and this conduction velocity not recordable here yeah yeah uh, mm -hmm. so because uh, proximal uh, there is no record only happening uh -huh. Okay, then uh -huh. in the TBL? TBL also, madam, uh, demyelinating con without conduction velocity. And uh, so, and yes, ma'am, all entire all nerves demyelinating picture is there with yeah. proximal stimulation, madam. There is conduction velocity difference is much more, ma'am. So, ma yeah. possibility of uh, conduction block can be there, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, conduction block is also there, correct. Mm -hmm. And you see the sensory? A sensory, ma'am, not recordable only, ma'am. All sensory is All correct? sensory absent. Okay. And the patient has history of uh, sensory ataxia, yeah, with a only a mild reflexia. distal weakness, and generalized reflexia. What would you say? Uh, dorsal uh, root involvement, ma'am. Uh, DRG, dorsal root ganglion involvement can be there because absent snaps are there. No, 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 no. no. See, dorsal root ganglion, the CMAP will not be so abnormal. Mm -hmm. Okay. In dorsal root, DRG is a sensory problem. So, mm -hmm. all the sensory snaps will be absent. Yes. But the CMAPs will be very good. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Here, lot of abnormalities there in the CMAPs also. Okay. So, this can't be dorsal root ganglion. Any other yeah. side? Then, ma'am, peripheral now only mixed. Yeah, it looks like it is peripheral nerve oh, yes, because yes. snaps are absent, right? So it is post ganglionic mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. maybe based on history, ma'am, if it is long, then it is possibility of uh, CIDP we have to keep in mind. Okay, okay. Um, have you noticed something in the uh, latencies? Um, the distal latency and the proximal latencies. Ma'am, at the level of median, it is like 0.6 difference, ma'am, at the level of median, left median. Ha, left median, what is happening? 0.6 no, not difference. Not the amplitude, I'm saying distal latencies. Latency, one minute. So the latency at the wrist is 18.5, but the mm -hmm. latency at the elbow is 25, mm -hmm. which is okay, or uh, you think this is... More uh, problem. More, no, more see, normally the... also, there, when you go proximally, the latency increases only, na? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But is it that prolonged? Uh, less than 50%. Man. Yeah. Okay. And what happening? What is happening in the left ulnar? Left ulnar. Okay. More than 50, like 14, then more than just, 50. Just, but... just, just. Okay. So prolonged. more than 50, but just more than 50, not very mm -hmm. prolonged. Okay, so if you have if you have seen the uh, proper CIDP or CMT nerve conduction studies, when you see wrist, the latency is prolonged. But if you go to elbow, the latency even goes the significantly prolonged. Okay, so it goes more than fifty percent of the proximal latency. I mean the distal latency. Okay, so here there is predominantly distal latency prolongation happening. Okay. Understand, especially at the ulnar and median. Okay. So, which means? Uh, patient has sensory attacks here. Yeah? This is somebody has answered uniform slowing. There is no uniform slowing over here. Mm -hmm. And there is also conduction block happening over here. Okay. So, that cannot be CMT. Mm -hmm. Somebody has answered CIDP, yeah, acceptable, CIDP acceptable, but anything different from the uh, usual CIDPs. What do you see? What is the normal pattern in the CIDP? Cut. If you see motor weakness, uh, if there is a motor weakness in CIDP, what is the pattern of weakness in CIDP? It is proximal equal, no, 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 proximal Probably. equal to distal. Yes. Understand? Uh, it is proximal equal to distal. If it's pure nerve, it is distal much, much more than the proximal. 
Understand the weakness I am saying, not the nerve conduction study. Weakness I am saying. Okay. Yes, yes, okay, okay. This patient has uh, no proximal weakness. She just has mild distal weakness and she has significant ataxia. And we see predominantly distal demyelination and sensory completely absent. Somebody has answered dads. Which dads. Is dads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is a distal demyelination. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Okay. So from this NCS, it is very agree that it is very difficult to differentiate from the just if the NCS is kept, you can answer CIDP also. Okay. okay. But if you have a history like this at the background, he, there is only mild distal weakness and there is only, uh, um, I mean, there is a ataxia. So then in those conditions, you will have to think of DADS. Okay. What is okay. DADS? Distal acquired demyelinating symmetric neuropathy. So in that, what is a variant of some variant of CIDP? What happens in that? Like, uh, it is like distal weakness will be more prominent. Uh, you have to have at least four sentences ready for dads. No, okay. that this is a distal, uh, distal predominant uh, demyelination. The uh, it is a variant of CIDP. Then here the ataxia is more prominent feature, and only mild distal weakness will be there. Yes, then no. here uh, it is uh, the antibody which is there, which is MAG antibody, Magnum. which is IgM antibody. So uh, and then what is the association of dads? What is the treatment of dads? All this you can uh, answer, no? Okay. You must have read it all for the uh, theory. Exam, yes, theory, okay? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. So uh, next, yeah. Doctor Nilofar will answer. Yeah. No. Next yes, case. You can ah, so this is very interesting case. He recently presented to us. He is a twenty-eight year old male, and he presented with tingling in the dorsum aspect of his right hand. Followed by his draw. Okay. And five days later, he started having tingling and uh, in the left lower limb and then he developed a foot drop. So he has a right uh, wrist drop and left foot drop. Okay. And history is only of 10-15 days. And patient had tingling numbness also. So tell now what it is. Somebody read it. Dr. Nilofar is there. You can unmute yourself. Dr. Asta, you can try. Uh, hello? Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ma'am, in this, uh, the right median, uh, mm. the amplitude is uh, normal, 9.9. Mm. And mm. the latency is also uh, normal. Mm. And amplitude, uh, then, ma'am, the velocity it is a uh, forty-eight. Mm. So that is also uh, that is uh, borderline normal. Mm. And left median also, ma'am, uh, amplitude is normal, n point seven, and uh, latency is also normal, and velocity is. Uh, okay. See, if you read the, this was a very detailed nerve conduction study that was done. So here you see at the right median, wrist, elbow, and upper arm. Three conductions are there. Yes. Okay. Hmm? Yes, so, yes. Uh, if you notice over here, um, the latency is 3.65 uh, and the amplitude is 7, ma'am. Yeah. So, but uh, over here, if you see the upper arm, the amplitude has dropped more than 50% over here. Huh? Yes, ma'am. 3.7. Okay. Almost. More proximal you have gone, more drop has happened. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and it has dropped to less than 50%. So, there is a little bit of conduction block happening over here at the proximal sides. Okay? Ma'am, but it is 3.7, so it's, it's slightly more than 50%. Uh, yeah, but it is quite low. I mean, the amplitude has de decreased quite low. Not exactly like a complete conduction block. Yes, okay, you can say partial conduction block in this situation. Okay, yes, but it has dropped to up to at least 50%. It has dropped. Okay? Yes, yes. Then, left median, you see. I mean, left median also the C map is normal, but again there's a drop in the amplitude from seven to two. Yeah, so yeah. Again, there's a conduction block. This is a significant conduction block. Okay, at yes. the proximal side. Then, in the right elbow, ma'am, the again the C map is normal, but again there's a drop below elbow. Again, fifty percent drop from six point three to three point one. Yeah. So here the below elbow also drop has happened, and the above elbow also. 
Uh, I mean, there is already below elbow drop that has happened uh, in yes. the right ulna. Then, and in the left ulna also there is a drop again from seven point nine to three significant drop. Correct. Uh, above elbow level. Correct. And, uh, and in peroneal, man, peroneal again uh, there is a drop above fibular head in this uh, from uh, it's two point six to point seven. It has come. Yeah, at the proximal side above fibular head. Okay, yes. so here also drop is happened. Okay. Yes, and left and peroneal. And here also four four, four to uh, two point. It's not visible. So from two the point. this thing, what you can conclude is that even if the distal conduction velocities are okay, I mean the conduction velocities are not much favoring the demyelination, yes, but you have yes, significant uh, amplitude yes. drop happening proximally. Yes, okay. Yes, ma'am. Abhi, this is the uh, snaps. Yes, ma'am. Here, ma'am, on the medium, uh, the snaps or latency and the amplitudes are normal, mm. and the velocities are also normal. Mm. Uh, in all the radial and median, and the, uh, but in the sural nerve also it's normal. In mm. the left sural, uh, that is at the calf level, mm. the onset latency is okay, but the amplitude is dropped, one point three. Correct. And laten and the latency is okay. And uh, right sural, ma'am, also, but the amplitude is okay. So there's a significant difference in the left versus right sural. Correct. And in the superficial peroneal, uh, there is a amplitude again uh, low, 1.6. While in uh, right side, it's so normal. So on the Correct. left, there's asymmetrical uh, amplitude difference on the left sural and superficial peroneal compared to right side. So patient has a history of left foot drop and right wrist drop. Okay. So the in nerve conduction study, uh, in the snap, left sural and superficial both are absent. What does it indicate, ma'am? That uh, there's a uh, ampli, but the mode, uh, there's a axonal involvement. They are not absent. They are low. Yes. So what does it indicate, but ma'am, axonal involvement of these two. Okay. And uh, secondly, so that in localization wise, I'm asking if in one leg. If you have both sural and superficial peroneal getting abnormal, what does it indicate? In that the same not, uh, it's a polyneuropathy. It's not a single, uh, either the sciatic involvement is there. Yeah, that is what I'm saying. Not a polyneuropathy, but it could be a mononeuropathy of sciatic nerve. Na? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so mm -hmm. sciatic nerve can have, uh, I mean, there is superficial, both snaps will be abnormal in sciatic nerve. Superficial yes. and uh, peroneal. Yes. Yes. I mean, the yes. sural and peroneal. And yes. uh, you already have a background that the patient has a foot drop. Okay. Yes. Yes. Possibility of sciatic neuropathy could be there. We don't know. What is happening in the peroneal CMAPs and the TBL CMAPs? See, TBL is not given only. Peroneal CMAPs, what is happening? Ma'am, there, there is some conduction block in the yes, proximal uh, like... stimulation. Okay. Yes, yes, okay. But the conduction block was noticed in most of the nerves in the upper yes, limbs. Okay. Yes, yes, so yes, what does this indicate? Um, uh, it's it a demyelination or is it a demyelination at axonal? Ma'am, it is uh, mainly axonal. The demyelination both are there. But mm -hmm. the conduction block signify signify uh, signify demyelinating. Uh, mm -hmm. So it is, can be a multifocal uh, MMNCV type of picture. Where axonal as well as conduction hey, block. MMNCB MMNC is pure motor. MMNCB is pure motor. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sir. Isme pure motor. It is snaps also getting affected. Na? So that yes, means it is something else, which is medicine. Yes, sir, medicine. Understand? Multifocal, acquired, demyelinating. What is the full form? Medicine, what is the full form? Multifocal acquired demyelinating sensory and uh, uh, sensory as well as axonal. Uh, multi hey, neuro, sensory multi or axonal nahi hai. Multifocal acquired demyelinating mad sensory and motor. Multifocal acquired. asymmetric demyelinating sensory and motor. Sensory and motor. Yeah, radicular neuropathy. Okay. So this is a mad sam. It looks like proximal conduction blocks of MMNCB, but the snap is affected. So that is the only thing that will pair that this is a mad sam. Yes, Understand? Yes, ma'am. Next case. 
हेलो डॉक्टर विकास सर यू ऑनलाइन मोटर मैम डिजिटल इंक्रीज प्रोक्सिम स्टडी इज नो रेकॉर्ड फाउंड not recordable in the anticubital posa and sensory what is happening uh, sensory is uh, ma'am normal amplitude and yeah time. so what does this mean proximal conduction yeah. blocks block. with normal sensory patient has only left hand weakness last last case we discussed that patient had a multifocal proximal conduction box but he had a abnormal snaps now this patient has a normal snap yes, no, so it is mmncv yes, yes. yeah so mmncv diagnostic criteria you all are aware right Hmm. so this is like a short like a cidp cases are maximally asked in the exam actually so you should be aware of all the variants and how to differentiate them uh, electrophysiologically okay yes so next case i'll take yeah dr shordan you can continue yeah So, forty-eight-year-old male is there, and he has asymmetric distal, uh, more than proximal weakness, affecting lower limbs more than upper limb. This is going on since one and a half years. Okay. Okay. This is the nerve conduction study of motor. Ma'am, right median is a at a very uh, latency is normal. Mm. Uh, amplitude is also normal, and mm. conduction velocity is also normal, fifty-eight. Correct. Right, right median is normal, study. Mm. And right ulnar uh, latency is normal, amplitude mm. is also normal, mm. and uh, conduction velocity. Right ulnar study also normal. Mm. If you have described median and ulnar right side, you just look for left median and ulnar simultaneously, yes, so that you can finish the upper limbs. Left median uh, latency is normal, ma'am. Hmm. Amplitude is also normal, and hmm. uh, conduction velocity also normal. Okay. And uh, left ulnar uh, latency is uh, normal. Hmm. Amplitude is also normal, ma'am. Correct. So in below normal. Normal, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. In the peroneal. Uh, right peroneal, ma'am. Uh, Uh, distal latency is normal. Hmm. Uh, amplitude is uh, normal, ma'am. Hmm. And uh, conduction velocity is also normal. Okay. And, uh, right TBL. Uh, distal latency is uh, normal. Conduction amplitude velocity is, is slightly low, ha? Huh? Right there. What is the normal conduction velocity of peroneal? Uh, peroneal fifty, ma'am. Yeah. So it is slightly low, not much low. Forty. Then. Hmm. Then TBL. Yeah, TBL. Ah, uh, distal latency normal. Hmm. Ah, uh, amplitude is also normal. Hmm. 
and uh, conduction velocity also normal normal then left peroneal left peroneal distal latency normal amplitude also normal correct normal uh, okay. conduction slightly velocity is slightly lower, lower 44 yeah. and what is the conduction velocity for tbl tbl also ma'am 49 okay so what do you think from the nerve conduction study motor in a motor study ma'am only bilateral peroneal mild conduction velocity decrease okay okay so that's now i go to f and snaps yes uh, median median and ulnar f latency is normal less than 31 tbl right and lateral uh, f latency prolonged mm. and uh, left median ulnar normal only the right uh, tbl and uh, left tbl uh, f, latency, f latency is normal uh, will prolong okay so rest all looks okay now yes ma'am even the snaps look okay Hmm? Right median normal, right ulnar normal, right radial also normal. See, if a patient has a proximal plus distal weakness, which is going on past one and a half year, to the extent that the patient is wheelchair bound, and you are not finding anything on the nerve conduction study, and it is an element type of weakness. Yes, it's mostly. Uh, uh, ALS, uh, motor neuron disease. So, localization, be, localization is proximal. Uh, proximal to dorsal root ganglion. Correct. So, it is either roots, multiple roots, Arose. or anterior horns. Multiple roots or anterior horns. Multiple roots versus anterior horns. So, what you have to do now? Uh, EMG. Man. Correct. What does the CMG suggest? The right gastro nemius muscle, medial mm -hmm. head. So the spontaneous fascicular denervation. Mm -hmm. uh, MUP was uh, held. Held is H. High amplitude. Uh, High amplitude uh, prolonged. Prolonged now. Huh? Uh, recruitment law and uh, interfacing contain mostly mom denervation right guess on image chronic or active denervation uh, chronic uh, why uh, uh, mup is a large and uh, multiphasic so that is indicative of uh, uh, chronic denervation but i am saying there is active also fasciculation uh, ma'am uh, so, active. Active, so, this is active plus chronic denervation. Chronic are indicative of active denervation. Active. Huh? And uh, this HLDs, they are suggestive of chronic uh, denervation. Chronic V3 uh, denervation. Yeah. And uh, the tongue of the gasonium positive sharp wave is also for spontaneous activity. So, this is denervation active. Somebody has answered muscle in the uh, na, this thing, answer. So, if a patient has a quadriparesis and does not have, I mean, and no abnormality on the nerve conduction study, of course, muscle is also a possibility. But uh, um, to differentiate that, the anterior horn cell, either anterior horn cell or motor or, I mean, the root or the muscle will be possibility. To differentiate that, we have EMG. So, from mm -hmm. EMG, we are finding that this is denervation, not yeah, five. Okay. In the tongue, we found something. Tongue needling, we found something. Ah, positive sharp wave is also a spontaneous activity. So, so this is active denervation. Correct. But positive sharp waves has a value in the criteria, diagnostic criteria? Or they want fasciculations only? No, ma in the diagnostic criteria of Avaji, they have asked for the EMG findings. Na? So, yes, in that mentioned uh, fasciculations only or they can uh, like they are okay with the uh, positive sharp waves also. They were fasciculations. 
one minute most of the like the diagnostic criteria i think they have asked for fasciculations only yes yeah. then right ta what is happening normal normal ha uh, right vastus uh, vessel is also, also denervation active plus uh, make it a habit saying that the active plus chronic active plus or chronic denervation left ta also there is yeah, active also. plus chronic denervation chronic denervation polyphysics what does this polyphysics mean polymagic mean uh, Uh, in a patient who yes, has uh, large large mups high amplitude long latency ampli long duration amp uh, mups if you get a polyphasics also simultaneously what does that mean simultaneous renervation yeah so partial renervation okay so yes. you are always have to mention how much polyphasics are seen plus 1 plus 2 like that okay So this yes. is FTA is again active plus chronic denervation, but there is also some renervation happening in the left T T A. So left vastus is okay, then left uh, right deltoid is okay, right triceps is okay, right M D I. What is there? It also spontaneous pips, ah, uh, denervation, ma'am. Correct. So there is a uh, active plus chronic denervation is there. So what what is the conclusion? बल्बर सेगमेंट अफेक्टेड बल्बर सेगमेंट इज अफेक्टेड एंड देन एंड सर्वाइकल एफडीए इज अफेक्टेड एफडीए व्हिच इज सीएटी वन सेगमेंट सर्वाइकल सेगमेंट हां सो ऑल थ्री सेगमेंट थोराकस थोरासिक का पैरास्पाइनल आई डोंट नो व्हेदर इट इज मेंशन बट सो दैट मींस व्हाट दिस इज अ पक्का ऐसा जैसा एएलएस में what uh, uh, what nerve conduction findings do you see in als only mem uh, possibility of uh, decrease cmap amplitude but uh, sensory is uh, compulsory normal yeah so cmap amplitude can be low in als anything else in f will something is seen or f is are always normal in anterior horn cells yeah, mild prolong let huh? Not prolonged high amplitude F waves. You can get high amplitude F waves, large F waves. Okay, giant F waves. Okay, in the anterior horn surfaces. One minute. Huh? Then next. So you have to go through this criteria of Gold Coast criteria. You know all that, na? Huh? LS for real and Avaji's criteria. Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Next case. डिफिकल्टीशन ऑल्सो so peroneal latency amplitude not recordable right tibial not recordable left peroneal left tibial not recordable mm -hmm. left median amplitude is decreased latency is prolonged and uh, velocity is not recordable where where velocity left median madam it is uh, uh, the conduction velocity is there no it is 27 milliseconds millimeters uh -huh. per second right. Ah, twenty-seven milliseconds. Ah, it is reduced. Conduction velocity is reduced. Reduced. Ah, reduced. Um, uh, and there is conduction block. Correct. Very good. In the left median. Hmm. And uh, in the left ulna, um, there is a decreased amplitude. Hmm. And uh, latency is okay. Hmm. And uh, conduction velocity is decreased. And uh, here also above elbow is also conduction block is there. Hmm. partial conduction block and the right median also uh, amplitude is reduced uh, latency is prolonged and conduction block is there and velocity is reduced correct right ulnar also amplitude is reduced latency is normal 
and there is conduction block and decreased conduction velocity. Okay. Uh, From this, so, uh, what do you conclude? Uh, so, uh, multifocal demyelination. Very good. Very good. Multifocal demyelination is there. Yes, ma'am. But uh, if you notice the conduction velocities, they are like in a uniform range. Mm. They are like in the 20s to 30s. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, fine. Mm. Now, this is the F. FF's TPL is not recordable and uh, median and ulnar are prolonged uh, both bilaterally, left and right. Okay. If latencies are prolonged. Yeah. So, sensory not recordable, both bilateral, sural, bilateral, uh, so left uh, superficial peroneal, bilateral median ulnar, mm. radial also. Okay. Which waves are this absent. H waves are not recordable. Correct. So motor, sensory, um, conduction blocks, multifocal demyelination. Yes. Um, with uniform slowing. Correct. Um, so hereditary neuropathies, HNPP. So, uh, yeah. So uniform slowing is there. That is right. But there is another uh, requirement in a... Which sense, hereditary sensory motor neuropathy you are telling? Mm. So, conduction blocks are seen in uh, CMTX, HNPP, and CMT1. Uh, so, see, CMT1, no, usually CMT1 has uh, this uniform slowing. Okay. And uh, there is this latency prolongation and all, but you will not get this multifocal conduction blocks in CMT1. Okay. Okay. okay, this multifocal conduction blocks will come in CMTX, CMT4 and CMTX, CMT4C, or it can come in the CMTs with overlying CIDPs. Ah, yes, ma'am. If there is overlying CIDP also, then also this multifocality can happen. Okay, so three differentials in a CMT you should be if there is multifocality in the conduction system, then you have to tell these three answers. Okay. Okay. H HNPP can't be there. HNPP, um, what do you see in HNPP? Uh, so they should be at the non compression sites, mm -hmm. uh, there should be conduction blocks. Correct. There mm -hmm. should be conduction block at the non compression sites. So now you go back and see. Hmm. Mm -hmm. TBL is non-compression site. Peroneal can be a compression site. Mm. Median LR can be compression here, site. See, here too, they, they are not recordable only. But mm -hmm. uh, is there any con uh, conduction block happening at the no, uh, non-compression site? Mm, no, ma'am. Median and LR both are at compression sites. Correct. So that is what my point is. Okay. So the uh, hnpp usually it is compression sites uh, like for i mean uh, like for example in the peroneal you can get it at the uh, fibula, neck fibula neck neck of fibula or at the wrist you can get where median yeah, in the axillary groove okay and in median you can get okay hnpp can be a possibility uh, but looking at the patient's history this is something different now mm. okay it's not like one mononeuropathy happening. It's a polyneuropathy. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So you have to remember all the CMTs. Then 35-year-old female with tingling in both hands. Dr. Varun can answer. Yes, ma'am. The right median latency amplitude seems normal, ma'am. Right ulnar also, mm. it's fine. Mm. Left median uh, 
that amplitude is little reduced and latency is prolonged uh, conduction velocity is also reduced at the level of wrist map uh, left all nerve seems okay right median okay pause uh, maybe compression at the level of wrist map yeah uh, carpal tunnel ma'am maybe yes very good yeah. This is the snap. Right, right. Uh, left, left carpal tunnel, ma'am. Ah, uh, what is the grade of carpal tunnel? Grade, I don't know, ma'am. Grade, grade. Grade, you have to read, no? Yes, ma'am. Can anybody read this out? Should I read, ma'am? Yeah. yeah. Uh, very mild grade one cts demonstrable only with most sensitive tests mild what is that sensitivity what is that sensitivity index what is it uh ma'am like inching technique will be there ma'am then no not inching <laughs> mixed farmer mixed sensor huh ma'am mixed farmer study ma Comparison study. Uh -huh. Comparison study of yeah. ring different palm difference. No? Mm -hmm. Ring difference and palm difference. That is a comparison study. And what should be the value? No, more than uh, 0 0.4. No, and the combined value should be more than 0.8. No? Ring diff plus palm, palm diff should be more than 0.8. Okay. Huh? Or individually, if you say it should be ring diff should be more than 0.4 and palm diff should be more than 0.5 SI. Okay? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. So, but you should know that uh, very mild is only detected on the sensitivity index. Okay? okay? Mild is? Mild is grade 2. Sensory nerve conduction velocity slow on finger wrist measurement. Normal terminal motor latency. Correct. Moderate grade three. grade three sensory potential preserved with motor slowing, distal motor latency to sorry. Hmm. Distal motor latency to APB less than 6.5 millisecond. Correct. Severe severe grade, grade four sensory potential absent but motor response preserved, distal motor latency to APB less than 6.5 millisecond. Hmm. Very severe grade 5 terminal latency to APP more than 6.5 millisecond. Extremely severe grade 6 sensory and motor potential effectively undecodable. Surface motor potential from APP less than 0.2 millivolt amplitude. Correct. So you should know the grades of uh, carpal tunnel syndrome. Huh? Okay, they can ask in the exam when they are uh, that is given. So in this patient, what is the grade of carpal tunnel syndrome? The left snap is absent and the CMAP latency at the wrist is 8. And the conduction velocity is very low. So, what do you think? Absent. Absent. Not the risk It is severe. Grade four. Whenever, yeah, grade whenever four. the uh, whenever the snaps get absent, it is severe. Mm. Okay. So it's a severe uh, carpal tunnel syndrome. Somebody has written in the here that uh, yeah. So that's what I answered. That in the nerve conduction study here, one minute, huh? we'll go back to that previous case. This, this is a multifocality, okay. In inherited neuropathy, remember this, inherited uh, demyelinating neuropathies, you should not get multifocal conduction blocks, okay. They can have uniform slowing, there can be latency prolongation, but you should not get conduction blocks or multifocal uh, conduction blocks or temporal dispersions also. Okay. If that is happening, that means either there is some acquired CIDP on it or there are special types of uh, CMTs which can have multifocal conduction blocks such as CMTX or CMT4C. Understood? Yes, ma'am. So, yes, ma'am, ma in, so, ma in this case, it is CMT plus CIDP because 15 days acute onset is there. So, possibility is CMT yeah, plus CIDP yeah. only. That is what I wanted to tell. Ki this patient had actually presented to us and he had like this CIA, CMT was there. But there was also worsening of uh, uh, 
uh, this problem since last uh, 15 days. So we initially thought that this is some additional CIDP happening in this patient. We sent the genetics also and it turned out to be CMT4C. Okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. So now we'll go to... This is Regarding a... uh, palm risk conduction... Uh... Yeah, this is something which we, I mean, uh, they ask different, different tests that you, how can you prove that there is a, a, a conduction block at the wrist? Okay, so one is that you can do the, what what you can do, this is what we have done. Okay, so mid palm uh, CMAP recording and then wrist CMAP recording and the conduction velocity, I mean, the distance measure from mid palm to wrist and you put the distance and you will get a conduction block over there. If you do the wrist and elbow, there is no, I mean, the conduction velocity is good, but the conduction velocity between the mid palm and the wrist is significantly affected. So there is a conduction block happening at the, uh, somewhere between the mid palm to wrist. This is one way you can demonstrate the conduction block at the wrist. Understand? You, there is another way also, which is that you can do the sensory also. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Mixed sensory. Yeah. Somebody wanted to ask something. This is why we do the mid palm also because sometimes uh, uh, you can miss the uh, this thing diagnosis of carpal tunnel without doing the mid palm. So patient presented next case. Next doctor Asta can try. I don't know how many cases are left. So that's what I'm thinking now what to do. <laughs> because the uh, foot drop is there and wrist drop is there and brachial plexus is there. I don't know what to do now. Okay. okay. Otherwise, next time we can continue. Yes, sir. That is what. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it... we'll just finish off this uh, this foot drop thing. Uh, otherwise, next time we can continue. Yes, sir. We'll keep all of them next time only. Yeah, yeah. Anybody mm -hmm. having any doubts? You... Till now, they can ask. Then we can close the session. The, uh, regarding this palm wrist, uh, there is some uh, point for something is difference should be there between ulnar and median. Yes, that sir. That is a this. ring diff. Uh, palm diff and ring diff, sir. Yes. Difference, huh? That is a sensory study which we are doing. Yeah. yeah. Huh. So the difference should be more than uh, point 0.4 for the ring point. diff, palm diff. And for a point, uh, I think both it is 0. 0.4 only. And total, yes. it should be more than 0. 0.8. Yes. Okay. Ma'am, I wanted to ask one thing. Mm. Yeah. Ma'am, like in uh, these nerve conductions, whenever we are reading, so whenever we have axonal as well as a demyelinating picture, both are there. Mm. So how to understand that we have to keep it as a more demyelinating, more axonal, only like approximately we have to understand or it's... Some See, in the exam, you can't keep doing the uh, calculations. Keep, this is like less than 70% of the uh, CMAP and this. Then. See, normally mm -hmm. what happens is if the CMAP is uh, uh, above like 50% uh, of the upper limit of normal. Okay. Yes. yes. So there is suppose, for example, 4.5 is supposed to be normal CMAP. Suppose. Okay. So yes. if you get a CMAP, which 4.5 ka half is what? 2.2 uh, uh, something like that okay so yes, if the cmap is coming about 2.5 okay yes, and for this cmap the latency is uh, uh, suppose 10 okay yes, so suppose yes, for 4.5 normal latency is less than 3 okay yes, uh, but the cmap is more than 50 percent of like uh, that half of the cmap value normal yes. cmap value okay so for yes, that cmap this latency is quite prolonged Okay. Understand. So then yes. it becomes more of demyelination mm -hmm. and less of axonal. Okay. Because what they have you seen this uh, uh, diagnostic criteria how they have given more than 70% of lower limit of normal. They are comparing that with the C maps. They are comparing with the amplitude of the C maps to the latencies. Understand. It's yes. not always absolute that this is the uh, this much is prolongation, then this becomes demyelination like that. You have to oh. you have to check the relation with the amplitude with the latency like that. Suppose, for example, if the amplitude is um, 
point uh, one, point six, which is very low amplitude. Then, okay, and yes, the latency uh, and the latency is uh, uh, in the previous case we had seen the latencies. Six. Uh, yes, yeah, there were twelve and all latency, but the amplitude was very low. Okay, yes. so in that case, it has become both. It has become secondary, like pure axonal degeneration is happening. So now in yes. this case, you can't really tell whether it is uh, uh, purely axonal or purely uh, demyelination. In this case, you can say it is mixed axonal plus demyelination. Okay. Understand. But if you have yes. this kind of picture where the CMAP amplitude is good, but the latency is very, very prolonged, out of proportion, out of proportion, then you can say that it could be demyel primary demyelination happening. Okay. Yes. Thank you. ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? Ma'am, in the criteria, yeah. they say more than 130% like that, you know, ma'am, for CIDP yeah. or latency. Yeah. For example, yeah. if we say like for median now, for suppose we take a latency of five, if that should be 130% means that should be more than 13 to fulfill mm -hmm. the criteria. Mm -hmm. If it is like uh, eight, nine, and the amplitude is uh, about 2.5, if it does not fulfill the criteria, we can't say it as CIDP, ma'am. Means no, then you have to look for the conduction velocity. Okay, conduction velocity is also like borderline 70%, they say in the criteria. Mm -hmm. If normal is like 50%, 50, mm -hmm. 50 meters, 70% uh, of that is like uh, 35. If it is if it is like 38, like that. Mm -hmm. If Still, it is not fulfilling exactly not criteria. The criteria. But uh, if it is not fitting the criteria, then you have to uh, see it with the clinical condition at F phase. Okay. Then you have to see the F phase. It is not just one nerve like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have to see everything together. But I would say ki, uh, according to the I mean, which criteria you are telling because uh, in yep. the F phase... Yep. Huh. EFNS only, they'll say that velocity is less than 70% and uh, on this... Uh, latency should be more than 130 normally we get in conductions the latencies would be 8 8.5 amplitudes mm. will be not so low mm. and velocity is also like 35 to 40 mm. 35 like that so we, it, it is not fulfilling i'm i'm thinking that if 130 percent is like it is like 13 or we have to uh, take it as 30 percent more than five means eight as a cutoff mm. Uh, this answer, I think I should be telling after reading a little bit. But what, see, in the exam, it is not possible to see. What I am trying to tell you is like, in the exam, it is not possible to do all these calculations in mind. Understand? It is absolutely very, very difficult. And even in practice also, we don't keep doing all this. Understand? Mm -hmm. We have mm -hmm. to consider the uh, main thing, you have to go it in... Uh, Take it in relation to everything, like amplitude relation with latency and latency relation with conduction velocity. That is what you have to keep looking at. So if you are saying the amplitude is okay, okay, but the mm. latency is 8, but it is not completely gone to 13. Okay. Mm. But if the conduction velocity is definitely going down, mm. okay, then I would consider it as a demyelination. Okay. Understand. If the conduction velocity would have stayed at 40s, Mm. Okay, I would have said that this is not a, uh, this may not be a demyelination or not fulfilling the criteria of demyelination, but it has okay. gone below 40. So then I would okay. consider that this is a demyelination okay. below 30. Mm. Understand? Okay. Yeah, in uh, criteria also, they have given definite, uh, probable, possible. Yeah. According to that, we can label it. Yes. Okay. Okay, anyone have other, any other question? Okay, uh, then we can close the session. Thank you, Dr. Soleha, and thank yeah. you, Dr. Uh, everyone who has participated. Okay. Dr. Harshwadan, Dr. Uh, Anusha, Dr. Asta, Dr. Varun, and every other people who uh, contributed. Thank you, everyone, for participating. Next class, we will continue same case discussion, and after that, remaining thing we will discuss okay sir. Uh, thank you doctor madam okay sir okay madam okay, we'll close the session thank yeah. you